Greetings, dear friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the new moon gathering where we come every month for our group meditation for the common good. Today we work with the energy of Libra and with this meeting, we open our second year working with this focus on the common good. And as we work with the energies of the Cardinal Cross, we bring our attention to the theme of cleaning the house of politics and religion. And specifically this month, our focus is on the topic of archetypes of new governance. Thank you for joining us. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Alexander. So welcome everyone as we connect with our purpose once again for this project which we have called the meditation for the common good and through our work we aim to support the manifestation of the spiritual plan for our planet through our group meditation which focuses group intention for the common good brings to life spiritual laws and principles and magnetizes spirit-saturated thought forms of solution for practical action. So let us align with the sign of Libra, the sign of balancing and careful weighing of values as we seek the right equilibrium between the pairs of opposites and as we strive to magnetize and energize the thought forms and the ways of being which will support the growth of new mechanisms and new processes for leadership and governance. Processes and mechanisms which reflect higher spiritual archetypes. So as we draw together around this intention and purpose, I'll hand over to Tracy, who will continue our alignment by leading us in the naming circle. Over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Rebecca. As we begin our focus today in this new moon meditation, the naming circle unites our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into our group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle, starting with our organizers and action group members. As your name is called, please unmute yourself, say your name and where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor, calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the heart center of the group gathered today as each one of us calls ourselves into this circle. Alexander. This is Alexander Ilchu calling in from Brooklyn, New York, United States. 
welcome. Rebecca. Hello, it's Rebecca Hood calling in from Mapleton on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland, Australia. Welcome. Katia. Hi, calling from uh, New York, USA. Welcome. Helen. Hello everyone, it's Helen, Helen Franklin. I'm calling in from Hertfordshire near London in England. Welcome. Daniela. Greetings everyone. Um, I'm calling in from Croatia, uh, Adriatic Sea, or coast rather, not in the sea, I mean the coast. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Anna. Hello. Uh, this is Anna Castillo calling from Mexico City. Welcome. Andrea. Hello, everyone. This is Andrea Ross calling from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in the United States. Welcome. Aneta. Hello, this is Annette Löfloff uh, calling in from Soru, Denmark. Welcome. Barbara. Hello, this is Barbara Rolfe calling in from Charlotte, North Carolina, United States. Welcome. Bernard. Bernard uh, Schnurring. I come from France. Welcome. Dana. Hello, I'm Dana from Romania. Welcome. Darcy. Hello, everyone. This is Darcy calling in from Washington, D.C. area. Welcome. Francis. Good morning. This is Frances Cadet calling in from Victoria, British Columbia in Canada. Welcome. Gillian. Hello, Gillian Douglas from North Norfolk Coast, UK. Welcome. Joe. Hi everyone, this is Joe Walls calling in from the Sangre de Cristo Mountains in Colorado. Welcome. Josette. Hello, I am Josette calling from Strasbourg in French. Welcome. Lynn. Lynn, please unmute yourself. Um, hello, this is Lynn Green. Um, finally got the right button. <laughs> um, I'm calling from the Columbus, Ohio area in the US. Welcome. Welcome. Martha. Hello, everyone. Martha Gallagher calling from Weehawken, New Jersey, USA. Welcome. Martine. Hello, everybody. This is Martine calling in from Belgium, Châtelet. Welcome. Natalie. Natalie, please unmute. This is Natalie from the North Island Sorry, I'm from the top of the South Island of New Zealand. 
welcome. Neo. Uh, hello, um, I'm Nelly from Croatia. Welcome, Nelly. Ruth. Hi, this is Ruth. Hello, everyone. I'm calling in from Corvallis, Oregon, in the United States. Welcome. Sanjay. Sanjay, please unmute. Yeah, hello, this is Sanjay Sharma calling from Tikangwad in Madhya Pradesh, 550 kilometers from New Delhi. Thank you. Welcome. Uta. Hello, this is Uta from the middle of Germany. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align, forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose. Thank you, Tracy and everyone. And um, I'm my pleasure to introduce the action area group for today. Um, and our action area group and other interested meditators, some of you perhaps gathered to contemplate our topic at the time of the full moon. And so all of us have been traveling together um, with the impressions generated, holding and brooding um, those impressions um, up to this time of the new moon now. So this month, our action area group is made up of Alexander, Katya, Tracy, Helen and myself. And I'll hand over now to Alexander, who will begin today's synthesis of impressions for our action area group. Thank you, Rebecca. Reflecting on the topic of the archetypes of governance, archetypes that condition political arena in human activities. The law of spiritual approach comes first on mind. It's a universal law that defines the principle of hierarchy of consciousness. 
through all the levels on our planet and in our system and in the larger cosmos. It's the principle of expanding consciousness. That receives impressions from the higher source and transmits them to the lower la uh, levels. If we look into the direct archetype of governance for our planet, we definitely recognize the spiritual hierarchy of the planet as a direct archetype and prototype for any governing activity. Our planetary hierarchy works in direct relations with the spiritual hierarchy on the Sirius. Receiving their impressions and guidance through focused meditation collective hierarchical meditation. And as they receive impressions, they focus them, interpret and radiate towards humanity. The same way governments of the future, no matter what level of governance that is, will be working following the same flow of receiving guidance from above, interpreting them and transmitting to their governing bodies, to, to people who rely on their guidance. As we reflect on the principle of hierarchical governance, we also recognize the, besides the hierarchy of consciousness, we recognize the principle of the hierarchy of responsibilities. Those who have the wider consciousness, they assume more responsibilities. And so if we look into how that principle could, would be applied to human governance, we recognize what Christ taught to his uh, disciples who is the first should become the last. Assuming the most difficult tasks of responsibility. Another thought for reflection that I want to offer today the group is the principle of triangles is one of the fundamental principles in astrology 
and in any energy work. So if we look how the principle of triangulation, or the principle of triangles work through the government, that great archetypes was perceived by disciples a uh, few centuries ago and been expressed through the constitution of the United States. That's got reflected in the in the system of governments with with the three branches of government, where the checks and balances established between each of the branches of governance. And if we look into this legislative, executive, and judicial branches of governance, we can recognize certain correspondence to the first, second, and the third rate. And so as we meditate on the archetypes for the new governments, I'd like to read the special virtues for each of those rays, first, second, and third. And as I read them, I invite us to think of those qualities as archetypical qualities for future governments. First ray of will and power. Special virtues, strength, courage, steadfastness, truthfulness arising from absolute fearlessness, power of ruling, capacity to grasp great questions in a large-minded way, and of handling men and measures. The second ray of love wisdom, special virtues, calm, strength, patience and endurance, love of truth, faithfulness, intuition, clear intelligence, and serene temper. The third ray of higher mind, special virtues, wide views on all abstract questions, sincerity of purpose, clear intellect, capacity for concentration on philosophic studies, patience, caution, absence of tendency to worry himself or others over trifles. And last, oh, that was uh, actually from the Esoteric Psychology, Volume 1, pages 200 to 204. And the last thought that I want to offer today for the group reflection, which will be a seed thought that I will offer to the med our meditation later, is a quote from Discipleship in the New Age, Volume uh, 2. The political regimes of the world need orienting to each other. It has never been the divine plan that all nations and races should conform to some standard political ideology or be reduced to a uniform general form of government. 
nations differ. They have different cultures and traditions. They can function adequately under varying and distinctive governments. Nevertheless, they can at the same time attain a unity of purpose based upon a genuine desire for the true welfare and progress of all men and women everywhere. Unity of purpose based upon a genuine desire for the true welfare and progress of all men and women everywhere. Over to you, Katya. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when we look at that statement that you re read, then um, the necessity to understand or benefits from understanding rather that different kinds of governments work under the influences of three major rays and probably not probably like at least 49 sub rays um, becomes a very interesting topic Those three major rays, they almost create this mathematical structure of three dimensions. And um, there is an archetype of hierarchy, right? And there is a effect on the development of those rare energies within the nations, the main actor, the world group, new new group of world service that works as the transmitter of those hierarchical energies and thought forms and um, possible way of development for humanity. So when we look at the nations and we observe the, the actions of the governments, then working in meditating groups can actually see where's the need for this shift because a, a lot of the governments work under the uh, influence of the ray energy, but yet responding mostly to the uh, war. Yeah, mostly to the lower vibration of the ray. So what is this possible path and what can be supported in order for the higher influence of the ray to be manifested, anchored? So how do we support people who work? people of goodwill who work for the governments and strategize and create the policies. So I believe that meditating groups can actually aid that process to a certain extent, of course, but yet that might be that the way to work with this issue of governance. And also when we think about the first ray, Tibetan tells us that 
mostly we can we receive that ray the influence of the ray that ray comes through the seventh ray which is now coming in on a much greater scale because we have two eras two cycles of aquarius coming at the same time so this is an enormous opportunity to tune to those energies and work with them. Also the process of the healing of this structure that we call governance. Healing as a transforming from one form or maybe rigid structure to the next less rigid and more infused with the enlightened thought forms or more efficient or whatever i think uh, what alexander read to us is very is very helpful when we when we look into what we're going to support, like what kind of qualities. I, mm -hmm. So as we recognize the need for a different type of governance, and we work more with the ray differences and learn how to support and develop those differences i think that might be a whole separate part of work probably for those who are so inclined and see that as something that is for for them to do so when we work with that issue, subject, we can intend the energy towards those people who will be working with that. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Katya. Um, so I'm sharing a thread of thoughts around the archetype of the triangle, um, which became a bit profuse, but I will try and move through it in a smooth way that doesn't dwell too much so um, firstly um, the idea of Libra and the triangle um, and so the idea of the synthesizing point of the fulcrum or um, the balance the central pillar of the scales and the two pans um, giving us this archetype of three um, with an integrating point um, at, the, at the top of the apex of the triangle. Um, so as has already been mentioned, we can place the, the three major rays on the triangle. And um, on the next slide we can see um, that now I've this has been a contemplation so this is not um, set in stone I've placed these um, qualities and rays on points of the triangle but you as you contemplate may um, find a different order for this but um, I placed ray two in the um, integrating center because it's the Christ principle to me that that integrates the other two um, and 
um, as Helen so beautifully pointed out, um, the, these um, rays are drawing in the um, major stanzas and the ideas contained in the great invocation. So we have the point of light, the point of love, and the centre where the will of God is known that um, work together on this triangle and which emanate all of the other rays and the sub-rays that Katya was mentioning as well. Um, we can also correspond the rays with um, three models of governance, um, which you can see on the next slide. Um, so we have the, the democracy coming from hierarchy and representing the hierarchy, totalitarianism representing Ray One um, and the Shambhala energy and um, communism representing humanity's um, attempt to make a solution for the problem of or the how to bring about governance. Um, and the Tibetans suggest that these three major political ideolo ideologies are the response, distorted but yet definite and determined sensitive reaction to the energies playing upon humanity from the two high major centres, um, Shambhala and hierarchy. He says, I would like to suggest that the ideology which is embodied in the vision of the totalitarian states is an erroneous but clear-cut response to the Shambhala influence of will, that the ideology behind the demo democratic ideal constitutes a similar response to the universality which the love of the hierarchy promotes and prompts it to express, and that communism is of human origin, embodying that ideology which human, humanity has formulated in its own right. Thus the three aspects of God's nature are beginning to take form as three major areas, and what we see upon the planet at this time are the distorted human reactions to spiritual impulses emanating from three different centres, but all equally divine in their essential natures and in their essences. And um, just reiterating the statement that was in the quote that Alexander read that the political regimes of the world need to orient to each other so that our governance becomes not competitive but a flow around this triangle um, taking from each other and giving to each other. Um, so on the next slide um, is illustrated um, this idea of the disciples of the world um, forming a third party um, a subjective third party that holds that fulcrum point that can bring together the opposites of for and against. Um, so DK says, the world of men today can be divided into two major groups. They are those who are fighting for some political party, um, some form of national government, some religious, social or economic attitude. They are against all that is not of their inclination. And there are those who are opposed to them and who are against them. Partisanship, fighting for or against and party spirit distinguish the modern world of men. With these activities which lead to separation and division and strife, the new group of world servers has no time or interest. They stand for those attitudes which will eventually produce a third party free from political and religious hatreds. So as I continue to, um, and thank you to Darcy for bringing these um, quotes into our discussions together as we prepared for the webinar. So on the next slide, um, you know, I continued my contemplations on this um, about, um, yeah, how we can um, 
Was there another slide that got missed or did I get them out of order, Sasha? Uh, no, okay, so go to the next one. Um, so, okay, that was the one I was looking for next. So um, this is the idea that the, the new group of world servers is holding this position of the common good and um, this position needs to unite the interests of the individual and the group um, and bring those things together. And um, in ourselves as individuals developing spiritually um, and all human beings developing, this is what we need to do in this time of Aquarius of bringing the individual and the group together to take care of the common good. Um, so what's on the next slide? <laughs> um, okay, so I this one is, um, so I put com conflict and harmony as opposites and negotiation as the factor that can bring bring harmony and conflict into an alignment. But you, I think you could easily put negotiation and conflict on the bottom um, base of the triangle and harmony at the top. But it's just thinking about how we can pra make practical the um, process of trying to recognise and realise the harmony of the triangle. Um, so next slide. Okay, um, this has already been mentioned, freedom and responsibility. Um, and um, the balance of those two being required to create the fulcrum of just governance. And moving on to the next one. Okay, so um, there was a slide that I'm not sure whether I left it out when I reset the slides, but I also had a slide with um, injustice on the left and struggle and resistance on the right and justice at the at the peak um, because I think that um, injustice and struggle form a pair as well and um, this is this next to there it is <laughs> thank you and then going back to the last slide I'm sorry if I got those so out of order I'm um, going back to the slide that you just had um, Alexander. Um, this comes from Rudolf Steiner's work on the threefold social order um, and he proposed that um, there should be three areas of our social order that are separate but that that nurture each other but that aren't that don't interfere with each other's provenances. So culture at the apex I placed um, which is um, the inner life of the soul and spirit and the development of the individuality, then the law whose provenance is to guarantee rights and limits. So it's the idea of rights and responsibilities again. And then economics, which he beautifully defines as brotherliness um, in meeting human needs. So um, working together in the spirit of brotherliness. I have a little quote here from the renewal of the social organism by Steiner. He says, if democracy is to become a reality, then it must be built on those forces in human nature that actually unfold themselves democratically. If nations would become democracies, then they must become institutions that permit human beings to bring into play that which governs relationships among all who have come of age. Every adult citizen must share equally in the regulatory process. Administration and representation must provide a climate in which a healthy consciousness of rights and responsibilities is allowed to unfold. And then immediately after this, he begins to speak about culture and he, he asks a question. Can such administration and representation also regulate the cultural life 
life that must bring about the full development of individual human potential if this development is not to wither and be thwarted to the detriment of all social life. And just finally, um, just acknowledging the Bindu point of um, the spirit that sits at the centre of the triangle and feeds everything and radiates from that centre. And um, I think um, this is really connects with our work with the Triangles Network as well of building these principles into the etheric. So I'll, I'll pass over to Tracy when you're ready. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Alexander and Katya. Um, well, when I was contemplating on this topic, uh, somehow my focus seemed to keep going in the direction of the current incoming rays and their effects on us. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that right now. Um, the archetypes for new governance are starting to take shape. As the fourth ray of art and harmony through conflict dominates ex expression on our planet. Old worn out patterns of governance are obstinately attempting to hold their grip which is creating necessary conflicts that will help morph them into a higher, new, artful, and harmonious way of being. I've noticed that the masses are no longer taking a blind eye and are awakening and beginning to hold accountability to the aggrandized agendas of Piscean age qualities expressed within their own national governments. It's through an awakened public that new and more advanced changes will take place. During the Libra New Moon, let's focus on all the nations and the bodies which govern them. Now let's consider the ray makeup of each nation and visualize how fourth ray energy can converge and synthesize with their ray archetypes. Through these, new through these incoming new energies lie the opportunity for growth and change, which will ever so deepen and help mature the qualities of expression through each nation. And from this evolves a beautiful and harmonious dynamic equilibrium, which affects the world and our planet in a positive way. So this is not the time for pacifism. In the Destiny of Nations, page 65, it states, the hierarchy is not neutral. It is one with the right element in every nation and set against all separative, isolationist and materialistic attitudes. These such attitudes hinder human development. It is through the united action of men and women of goodwill from every nation, race, political inclination, and religion to work together to clarify the basic principles of right living, cooperation, and brotherhood. And as this is realized, the new forms of governance will support it. New leaders will emerge and their thoughts, words, actions, and deeds will align with truth, responsibility, integrity, and upholding virtuous goals that benefit humanity as a whole, as well as the conditions on our planet. And from this, a synthesis of all races, cultures, and nations will be a certainty. 
selfishness will transform into selflessness and fear will transform into love as we work together using our unique differences as assets for the mutual benefit of all. Alexander, you can change to the next slide, please. An example of fourth ray energy and how it has been expressing itself in the United States is through the beginnings of decentralization in big government. Individual states are standing up to the central government in support of their citizens and their rights. These states are openly acknowledging that there is more than one way to solve a problem and a large cookie cutter type solution does not work for everyone in all circumstances. They've acted through creative measures by listening and assessing their unique population to safely address the issues at hand that will be most beneficial and safe for all who reside or visit their state. In this action, we see the rise of city-states in the United States of America. Esoterically, we know the fourth ray archetype is art and harmony through conflict. And the example I just gave of the United States gives us an exoteric look at how these qualities play out in our lives. It begins with conflict, which arises when the old and outdated culminate in expression and new and better ways are created through artful resolution from which harmony ensues until, of course, the next round of conflict. The repetition of this process can be visualized symbolically as a staircase with each level improving as its own evolutionary process. Step by step, conflict to harmony, mankind perfects and strengthens its core of being. Let's also look at the seventh ray energy, which is emerging, emerging on our planet at this time. Its archetypal patterns and qualities of ceremonial order and magic will be especially supportive in revitalizing and restoring our planet. Much of this will be accomplished as our ability to communicate and work with the David Kingdom increases. As humanity and our planet are urged in an upward manner through the expression of predominant rays that wax, wane, and meld together, we can look forward in anticipation for the creative and artful forms of solution that will express themselves in new levels of harmony. It is certainly an auspicious time to be here on this planet. Thank you. Over to you, Helen. Thank you. As we looked together, this Libra, to the ideas of new governance, thoughts of responsibility arose. Responsibility and, as Tracy just said, accountability. We needed to look not just at the qualities we hope for in our leaders and governors, but whether we have these qualities in ourselves. The ability to see clearly through glamour and illusion seem to be necessary. We need leaders who can see the plan and the future clearly, and we need to see and recognize their clarity and the light radiating through them. Again, without glamour, illusion, or expectation. 
One of the most important qualities to practice at all times, it seems, is complete harmlessness. And I notice that DK, or the Tibetan, says that harmlessness is a seventh ray quality. So hopefully on the increase. And it was interesting to hear in everybody's uh, ideas uh, today, um, the power of the rays. And of course, the seventh ray is a synthesis of all these different varieties in governance and bringing differences into a synthesis that is wholesome and good for all. The Tibetan also says that harmlessness is the control of our relations to others. I think this is another strong theme today. It controls our relations to others. So, harmlessness. Harmlessness involves a positive expression of poise, an inclusive point of view, and divine understanding. Again, we have a positive triangle here. A positive expression of poise, inclusive point of view, divine understanding. And at the center of that triangle is harmlessness. These qualities can be seen as Libran because they are about equilibrium from a point of balance. From the head centre, which has its petals to some extent opened with soul light shining in. We can see this point of soul awareness the thousand petaled lotus as a fulcrum of balance to have centered poise not rocked by astral or mental currents wide vision of the whole world situation and ultimately Buddhic coming under the law of spiritual approach and an understanding of the plan. That Buddhic level is the divine understanding. We also remember that at the very center of the fulcrum of the thousand petaled lotus is a 12 petaled heart in the head. And through this, we work under the law of love. I watched a lecture this week for medical students, and it emphasized the need to work with focused attention, open awareness, and kind intention. And to open their patience to these qualities too. This sounded like a very similar triangular message in a less esoteric form. Harmlessness is a major agent for the offsetting of karma. And this work is one of prime importance in our leaders and ourselves these days as we seek transparency in governance. 
I sometimes wonder if this offsetting of karma is part of the sealing the door where evil dwells. We and our leaders need to look for causes rather than to give blame. And to offset what we find as causes by developing qualities which are the polar opposite of any negativities. The Tibetan says, I would remind you that it is what you are that counts in this work more powerfully than anything else. The controlling factor is harmlessness in thought and word. The practice of this with proper observation will greatly help all of you. And I would like to suggest that I think it would also help those who govern us. Thank you. Let us prepare for the meditation. As we work with the energies of the new moon, we seek to bring the thought forms of solution to the existing world problems. and through our focused meditation to empower those thought forms to guide the human race on its path of evolution, creating the new Aquarian civilization. We link in the group heart center. Recognizing ourselves as a unit of meditative service. linked with a wider group of world servers who work for the common good everywhere in the world. We expand the radiance of our group hearts. Constructing the group Antakarana. We align with the spiritual hierarchy of the planets.
we extend our alignment to Shambhala. We align with the great planetary center called humanity. We recognize dynamic balance that is in the process of establishment between all the three centers. We invoke the energy of Libra. And as we stand in the dynamic voice of our meditation, we bring the topic of the archetypes of new governance into our group chalice. Invoking thought forms of solution that would guide humanity in its evolutionary process. Unity of purpose based upon a genuine desire for the true welfare and progress of all men and women everywhere. We meditate for minutes, strengthening this thought form. Unity of purpose based upon a genuine desire for the true welfare and progress of all. Katya. The flow of divine energies through three different types of government.
a new group, the conduit of divine energy and hierarchical imprint. Rebecca? In the balance of the three is found the archetype of wholeness. When the three become as one, the light of good governance may shine through human souls. Tracy. Through conflict and resolution, humanity adapts to a higher vibration and comes into a more evolved way of being. Helen. We place into the chalice harmlessness and responsibility. We collect old seed thoughts in a group chalice, raising it into the light of Buddhi. Strengthening 
magnetizing. Let the thought forms of the new governance be a radiant beacon for humanity. As we together create the new Aquarian civilization. We release the thought forms into the field of human manifestation. Let these thought forms do their due work. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center 
which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Thank you, Alexander. It is now time for opening our community impressions board so we can share our ideas and impressions and thoughts with the, with the group. You're also invited to share your impressions uh, by raising your hand or writing them in the chat box. And of course, as I said earlier, sharing them on the community impressions board uh, as they begin to come to you uh, even after this meditation. Over to you, Alexander. Thank you, Tracy. I will put the link to the community impressions board into the chat now. Sorry for the delay. Trying to locate it. Marta, please unmute yourself. Thank you, actionaries. This is truly an inspiring and extremely difficult topic to handle. Um, I would like to say to the five of you, I saw you as a five-pointed star um, actually doing the work of triangles, using the triangles to stimulate a more enlightened um, contemplation about the place and, and uh, significance of governance. The, the, I wanted to make, uh, well, let me demonstrate what I meant by the activation of triangles which you so skillfully used, you brought to mind that when we contemplate governance, we can think of the triangle of people, planet, and partnership. We can think of the triangle of harmlessness uh, turned toward responsibility uh, self-interest turned toward the common good and right speech turned toward the highest truth that we can hold because as we all know the challenge for right governance has so much to do with the glamour in which we all 
uh, live in and are all too frequently controlled by. And because governance is so significant, it suffers as well the presence of the glamour which we carry in ourselves and in our groups and in everything we do. But I believe that, and I want, I commit personally commit to listening to this presentation more than once. I know we can find it on the 2025 uh, website and I intend to look for it because there are a number of subtle points that in your cooperative exchange with right speech demonstrated a very high level of dialogue that in the current conversation is so polarized. And, and you pointed toward this, the challenges that toward freedom, that what does governance stand for if not freedom and it through service and intercooperation. So uh, a big, big, big thank you to what you achieved. And I wanted to offer the um, recognition that all today, and especially in the area of governance, the powers that control are those powers who control the narrative. And that while we have structures, whether they be parliaments or uh, the tripartite system that the United States has, I would suggest that those systems, structures, those structures are actually secondary to the um, challenge that all of us recognize how our own lens has been uh, muddied by our biases and by our partisan uh, participations. So you, you created a, a very challenging presentation that demonstrated what the common good can look like. And I thank you enormously for the, the march toward freedom, which is so difficult today. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. Lynn, please unmute yourself. Thank you for me also um, for your wonderful ideas and insights. Um, I thought I would add a reminder to us that um, we can be helped um, by tuning into the Deva Kingdom, that those ancient form builders build forms on all levels and um, are wanting to work with us. Um, if we just ask or direct our thoughts to them, um, they're also working, reminder that they're also working for the uh, externalization of the Christ and for the kingdom uh, of love that is promised. Um, so they would very much like to work with us, although sometimes wonder at what we do, I believe. Um, and although they see things very differently in terms of light and energy, um, I think we can, um, that they can recognize our thoughts and so forth in our words if we'll speak out loud often. 
and send messages to us too through um, through our thoughts and through our visualization. Uh, but they are definitely a wonderful source of help and cooperation um, if we will just see them as equal partners and treat them with respect and kindness, maybe just good manners sometimes. Um, they have a stake in what we're doing too because um, I believe that uh, humanity's survival on this planet as far as um, environmental issues is reverberates um, the consequences of that reverberate or the lack of survival of humanity on this planet reverberate through the cosmos and they don't want that happening I don't believe either we have to all work of course together for for the right outcomes um, I think also I, I remember a quote I think it's at least an approximate quote from DK the objective of true government control is right synthesis. So I think that flows well with what you were saying, you all were saying. Um, thanks again for your wonderful presentation. Thank you, Lynn. Today, our sharing part uh, before the meditation went longer than usual, so we don't have much time left. So I think we can wrap up this part of our work today. And uh, we grateful for your participation. And um, it's our group work regardless if you are presenting or participating in the action area group it's our collective intention that is the that's our work instrument that we together create for the common good of all thank you And uh, before we go into closing, just uh, uh, I, for those of you who have some extra time, I invite you to stay a little bit longer. It's that bonus part of our gathering every time when we look together into the next cycle and brainstorm and heartstorm the ideas for our focus, meditative focus in the next month. So that will be happening right uh, after uh, we wrap up this part of the work. Um, over to you, Rebecca. So as we close our work today, we align with the balance point, the fulcrum point of the scales, the divine equilibrium, self-observation that allows us to be harmless and also with the bindu point of light radiating from the center of the triangle and we say from our inmost being i stand a point of peace and through the point which I can thus provide, love and true light can flow. I stand in restful poise, and through that poise, I can attract the gifts which I must give. An understanding heart, a quiet mind, 
myself. I never am alone. For round me gather those I seek to serve. My brothers in the ashram, souls that demand my help, in though I see them not, and those in distant places who seek the masters. Thank you. And so the work continues. And uh, as we move in towards the full moon, we start, uh, we invite the community to contribute the ideas. So what would be the focus for our meditation in the next cycle? Libra to Scorpio and the next Scorpio uh, sign is uh, this the uh, part of the fixed cross in which we're considering the theme of sharing right sharing and uh, introducing the principle of sharing into all relations of human activities um, so any, um, we invite now your thoughts, uh, your inspirations and ideas. And this is an open floor, so um, if you would like to speak, just unmute yourself. If you are muted by an organizer, raise your hand and we will unmute you. I forgot to compliment you on your opening with the universal principle and the law. This, uh, honestly, this is the most orderly, clear, and inspiring uh, presentation of the group, of group work. And this is a difficult topic. So I would just say the next time, let's be sure to start with a principle or a law. And I'm willing to be an actionary the next time. I'm so inspired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't care what we talk about. <laughs> so I'll always advocate for sharing through the economy, but it can be any topic. Thank you. Thank you. The thought that's coming to me from the from what's happened today is um, the sharing of ideas. I would like to 
propose sharing through telepathy. It's interesting. Uh, this did seem to be like a very powerful meditation today. And I just keep getting uh, an interesting sense in my heart chakra region. <laughs> and it is the strength of this group is becoming more potent. So I just want to thank everybody. It's such an honor to be here with everyone. Thank you. Alexander, Sanjay here. Sharing is so uh, much necessary for planet survival, as also was uh, brought out in Rebecca's uh, presentation regarding brotherhood through economy. So it's a very important topic for the next cycle. That's my thinking. Thank you. I just placed into the chat the link to a video, which is a presentation of an astrologer. Um, this video uh, Darcy shared in preparation to this uh, um, meditation today. Um, in the gist, it says uh, it's talking about the coming astrological um, event of so called. Uh, Pluto return for the United States. And uh, the short gist of that is that it's uh, many transformational challenges the way it's uh, not only the US but the entire world because of how we interlinked. So uh, the topic of sharing challenging times, uh, sharing the challenges and how we share our path forward. Um, I think of sharing in personal relationships as it, certain principles that can be then extended on up through various uh, relationships, including international, even divine, I believe. I'm just noticing how um, non-material this sharing is that we're talking about. Um, we're not so much talking about sharing resources um, on a physical level, but on a higher level, which seems um, very appropriate that it is creating sharing on this level can create the groundwork that allows the meeting of human needs to flow naturally.
Yes, this was uh, discussed uh, like a coherence with divine mind. Yes, yes, and this <coughs> Duen, Duen Capita was mentioned and talking about it. The call from Shambhala that the highest and the lowest must meet. It's all this resonate to sharing and and uh, understanding the uh, buddhic reality, not reality astral, but buddhic reality, dissipation of glamour and higher mind. Thank you. Thank you, friends, for sharing and bringing these ideas into the group. Jealous for our continuous work. Um, in a week or so, a subjective support group, the custodians of the purpose group, will come together to uh, reflect further on this and decide on what would be the topic for our next cycle. If you're interested to join that meeting, please let us know. Um, thank you. And now we've uh, been aware of the time limits. Uh, it's, uh, the vigil uh, should be starting shortly, the vigil, the meditative vigil program. And we have to switch to another link. And we invite you to join the daily vigil together with us. If you are not part of that, I will put now the link into the chat and much gratitude. Here is the link for the vigil. Any last words of wisdom before we close? So if I were to express my uh, desire to, to work, how would I do that? You said, please contact, like, let us know how. How do I let you know? Uh, email uh, initiative.2012.webinars at gmail.com. So it's a long name, but or you can contact via the website 2025initiative.org. Thank you. And I think automatically a um, invitation for feedback will go out after the webinar. Is that right, Alexander? And you can respond to that as well. It's an easy way to respond. That's true, yes. A follow up email after this webinar. Much love and joy. <laughs>